Well, welcome back to Consumers Research series on the effects of ESG on the agriculture industry. Um, I'm glad to be joined today by Rodney Schatz. He is a grape farmer in California, um, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, you know, the myriad ways in which ESG has affected his ability to operate his business. And ultimately, the, you know, the point of this series is to, is to help consumers better understand ways that ESG, when it affects these businesses that serve you, it affects you as well. So thank you, Rodney. Really appreciate you, you joining us today. Very good. Nice to talk to you. You know, when did you start hearing about this term ESG? Is, is this something that you've known about for a very long time or, or kind of walk us through the process of when you started bumping into it? I, I wouldn't say it's been a long time. I, I've been hearing this for a couple of years, but what I really feel is that it's it's a new term um, that's that's being presented, but it's just a culmination of all the liberal nonsense that we've been dealing with. One of the things that's I think most alarming about the ESG movement is, while it is part and parcel of that same trend, it's now employing the financial services industry, the banking industry, the investment industry, even the insurance industry, to push some of those same far left progressive uh, agenda items. Is that something you're coming up against, either directly or indirectly? And by indirectly, I mean you know, like the cost of fuel and, and, and harder to get certain items. Have, have you run into any of this in your, in your, you know, yeah. finance, your financing at banks or, or, um, or sort of the inputs that you have into your business? On, you know, to get specific on the banking side, you know, we're still in, in our part of California here dealing with a lot of smaller regional banks. But what we do see when you do fill out a loan application is more environmental stuff every day. You know, is is there an old diesel tank on this property? Um, you know, did did the neighbor's cows come through the fence recently? Things that you know really don't matter to a farmer at that point. And so I would say that if hey, we found uh, you know chemicals were buried from forty years ago on this property, maybe we have a problem. It it's it's there. It can happen to us. Um, but it, it hasn't yet. So it's more the indirect things like cost of fuel. Have you seen this, you know, going on through your community? I assume you live in a, in a probably agriculture heavy uh, environment, not just your vineyard, but there are others, I'm sure, in the area. Is, is this something that people are talking about, the, these increased costs coming from the, from the ESG movement and how it's affecting their operation? Yeah. And, and I think in most part, they're not saying, hey, it's from the ESG movement. It's just that's what it is. And they're not even realizing it because in the world we live in, you, you, you pay these costs or you pay these prices or else you really must comply or die kind of situation. So, you know, back to, can you stay in business or do you just sell out and take another route in life? Uh, well, we're going to see some of that this year. We are going to see some real hardship and uh, you know, that's life, but why does it have to be because of all these environmental things or social things? A perfect example, as you know, the cost of fuel in California is at least 40% higher than most other states, mainly because of taxes. It's just wasted money. You're, you're in the industry and trying to, to keep your, your vineyard alive. You know, what, what are the things you would like to see, you know, from your elected representatives uh, to, to push back on this? Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot that, that could be done to lower regulations, lower taxes, that kind of thing. But in terms of the financial services industry, you know, is this something you think should be a, a priority for elected officials to push back on? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't know that in this state <laughs> we're going to get too much pushback. It's just going to continue. But at the federal level and the rest of the states, the conservative states coming together, maybe we can accomplish some things. There are some answers to uh, many of the problems that are out there, and they just need to be discovered or at least tried. And, you know, talking about fuel, for example, just that idea alone. Um, when you can get the fuel price down on everything, we all benefit from that. Well, before we close, is there is there anything you know about your your uh, your operation or your farm 
that I didn't ask about that you wish wish I had that you'd like to share? Well, I not you know you did hit on a lot of things. Maybe just the big picture for us trying to um, do the right thing and be socially conscious about how we operate. That's important. Um, but for example, we've had solar electricity at the winery for over 20 years. And the only thing I can think of that we've recovered from that is a tax advantage. And that's it. Every time, every time PG&E goes out there and puts a new meter on and changes the algebra, we, we didn't gain anything. So uh, there's some fallacy in some of these things. Uh, they're not real. Well, thank you so much, Ronnie. Please, uh, real quick, tell people if they want to get a hold of of, uh, of wine from your vineyard, where, where, where can they find you? It, our, our winery is called Peltier Winery, P-E-L-T-I-E-R. We're in Lodi, California. Um, we're, we're in about 25 states, and we have a couple sideshow labels that are a little more economical. One's called uh, Hybrid, and the other one's called Collier Creek. And I guess the bottom line, drink California wine. That's what we're after.